We'll see if this works. I'm frustrated. I it's really okay. am. Yeah, but it's Why? just like, it just like, like, like I tested it. Like I yeah, don't test things. If this oh. is really honestly oh, the worst right, part right, of our day. Right. No, we're listen. Okay. Oh, are we um, live now? Yeah, we're, we're live. I'm giving you a pep, I'm giving you a pep talk and we're live now. <laughs> Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> okay, hold on. Now I have to send, okay, go, wait, okay. I have to go into the live stream and say, go here. Done, okay, go here. I, I'm sending everybody to the new link. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. Okay, let me just give you a little rundown real quick since we are in our podcast. Here's, what's, here's what the deal is. I tested everything. I even did a tutorial on how to set this up because of how frustrating it has been for me for technical difficulties and such. And I'm like pressing the button and it's not working. And then just now I'm like, let's try a different link. And guess what? Guess what? Um, I didn't have to press go live at that extra link because it just put us live. So we are having a time. We are having a time. Um, not sure what's going on with that other link, but here we are and welcome. And here's Teresa. And hopefully all of you make your way over here instead of over there. Um, yeah. Great. <laughs> Nothing's happening over there right now. So <laughs> Nothing's happening over, there. over here is where the cool kids are. So we yeah. have to stall even longer to get people over here. But you guys. <laughs> You guys are making it. So that makes me so happy. Diane, I'm not even kidding you. When you said like, oh, are you having technical difficulties? I'm like literally just talking to Teresa and I'm like, we're good. We got to stall anyway. Like, and I was just talking and I'm like, okay, I know we're four minutes in, but we're going to start, but it's, it's better because we're going to be on even before we, I was last time and it's all good. Everything's good. We're just being cash. And then of course I had actually was like, why isn't it going live? Like I'm just sitting here watching it, not going live <laughs> anyway. Yes. Let's talk about how amazing Teresa looks because I'm underdressed. Thank you. Thank Let me you. tell you something about Teresa. I'm glad that the good live chat was happening. And I really hope that people that pop in, in a little bit, see and realize that we are not there. But yeah. I'm in there just in case. So I'll tell people. Um, what am I saying to you, Teresa? Um, you're talking wears, about how great I am. She wears a really good red lip. I, I wonder do. if I have any. Oh um, it's Kylie Jenner lip kit in the color Boss. Um, but it's been a journey to find the right color red lip. I, I know. I used to like be too scared to wear it because I was like, I'm not that bold person. Then I was like, who cares what other people think? Exactly. I only, I only started wearing it on Sunday. And so then I was like red lipstick Sunday. Mm -hmm. But now it's like any day. That's... Any day. Well, this isn't red, but it's all that I have next to me. So now I've got Beautiful. only lipstick on today. Mm. See, don't you feel it's like so pretty? So this color, I'll tell you a story. I feel it, Teresa, see, like we're made to have just like a video podcast because I just want to talk to you, but I'll tell you about this. So my lips are literally white. Like they're just white, the color white. It's like, I never get enough blood flow. And like, if you look at me, if I don't have something on, it's like, oh, is she breathing? So that's, <laughs> that's why I have these just right next to me because it's just a little bit to where it looks like I don't even look like I have anything on really. It's just like a tint. I'm not, I mean, but also my lipstick stays on. Doesn't transfer? Yeah. It's okay, like, but is it dry? No. <gasps> no. Yes. I know. That's what makes it so good. Okay. Tell me it. more. And it's vegan and cruelty free now. It's always been cruelty free, but she just started the vegan formula. Oh, wonderful, wonderful, it's wonderful. really good, Peggy. I love the packaging and I've almost purchased it for the packaging, but I've never spoken to someone who's used it. So now that I have, I will be on the internet later. Yeah. My friend sent it to me and I was like, well, I don't know if I would have purchased this like on my own, but yeah. now I'm so obsessed. I need so. friends who send me makeup. Okay. I need more friends that send me makeup. I don't need more friends, but I do. Yeah. 
<laughs> I don't have a lot. I, don't get me wrong. I'm not like really popular or anything. I just don't people. Um, hi everyone. Okay. So now that no, we have, <laughs> thank you for being involved in this. I just wanted to make sure that everyone made their way over here. So it looks like there is, there's nobody in the old chat. You guys are in the new chat. Can you tell us in the chat what lipstick this is? Teresa, our podcast is working. Wait. Oh my gosh. Wait, we got to do it in sync. Hold on. Oh, oh man. Okay. There we go. I don't, I don't <laughs> okay. It'll just be on shopping. <laughs> Wait, but did you buy? And then the next week we're going to be like, okay, remember last week when we said that we bought that thing and okay, let me tell you all the, I hate it. I hate it now. And then we'll never get sponsors. Um, will you tell? That's okay. Fine. Yes. So you're not in this at, chat, are you? I, well, because I don't know how to be in the chat. There. And I sent I, you the new link. I can't pay attention to the chat. Okay. Tell like, me and I'll, tell me um, and I'll put it in the chat. So <laughs> Ulta Kylie Jenner lip kit in the color boss. The color Mary Jo is also really good. It's just a little bit darker. What? Stop. <laughs> oh. I'm just having all the time when I say Ulta Kyler, Kylie Jenner lip kit color box. <laughs> box. Like, oops. B O S S. I know. Box. I know. I'm a boss. Okay. <laughs> X is close to S. You guys are awesome here. We're 17 minutes late. That's okay. We're hanging out. We're having a really nice time. Thank you for being here. We're going to paint now. We're going to paint now because we haven't started our fake podcast yet. We'll tell you all about it maybe later, but right now we're going to paint and I'm going to shush and I'm going to let Teresa take it. And Teresa, why don't you tell everyone what we're going to paint today? We are going, so I'm obsessed with the, uh, botanical line cactus and succulent book and so I'm going to take one of these if you have the book you can follow along on page 204 I think there's only one version of this one right yes okay um and we're gonna do a chalk rose succulent ah. Ooh. Ah. fun fun so who are excited? Yes, it's going to be beautiful. So you just tell tell everybody what they need. What are we, what are we going to need for this? Well, you will need. Um, I use a very small uh, brush for this because we're going to be doing a lot of blending. Um, so I have a size two uh, pigeon letter brush, of course. Um, I have a watercolor pencil. You can use a regular pencil, but I don't like how pencil lines show up underneath watercolor. So I um, use a watercolor pencil. And then you are going to be using like a, the specific color is Indian yellow, uh, hooker green and serpentine green, but you can use any three colors of a yellow, like a lighter green and then a darker green um, and then water and watercolor paper. And I'm just using a uh, Canson watercolor paper because it's there. <laughs> That's great. It's affordable. Yeah. It works well. Um, it's fantastic. I am multitasking and deleting the story that I put up with the wrong link because we're not this link. That's all I was doing. All right. Without further ado, I will be yes. here. Um, listen, everybody, I don't know if you guys host things on Zoom, but that's what we were complaining about before we started was that I, for whatever reason, and Teresa had this problem too, Spotlight is not here in Zoom. We know how to Spotlight. I don't want to hear it. We already know how to do it. It just won't let us do it. So I have her pinned, um, but it's still making it so that when I speak, the speaker view comes to me. And I don't want that. So when I am speaking, I will be toggling to this cute view so that you can still see what the heck Teresa is doing. Peggy, could you please put the name and author of that book in the chat? I will. Oh my gosh, I'm flattered because I'm the author. 
Oh. Um, yes, I'll put the link in there, but it's Botanical Line Dry but I'm sure it's the Cactus and Succulent Edition by Peggy Dean. I'll put it in the chat. Okay, Teresa, mm -hmm. take it, take it. Look at that. Look at that product placement. Okay. <laughs> so this book is super cool. For those of you who don't have it, go get it now. Um, but it does a really fun job of breaking down step-by-step -step on how to build all of these like super fun um, succulents. And I'm going to take just a second to show you guys like all the fun things that you can make. Like book review. Look at this cute little succulent that I made because of this book. And then there's another one. And then there's this. Oh, that's so cute. Okay. It's still doing it. I'm going to go to gallery. We're going to just see us both. That's okay. something. It's fine. And then this one was really fun because I like went through the book and like picked out a whole bunch of diff different succulents to do and then put them in like a replica of my grandpa's truck. Um, cause I was raised by my grandparents. So this one was really fun. And then this is sort of going to be the style of what we're going to do the chalk rose um, with today. So Peggy didn't know I was going to do that, but these are all pieces of artwork that she's inspired through this book. Isn't that fun? I'm shy. I know. <laughs> Thanks, Teresa. Okay. That's making my heart so happy. It makes my heart so happy. Um, okay, so I'm going to keep the directions off to the side. Um, because one, I want you to watch the video and get the book and you don't really need to look at the book while I'm drawing. So you're welcome. No, you um, can follow along. So yeah, we're just going to draw the center part of our rows and then slowly build it out. This is a five by seven um, piece of paper. Usually I work on a lot larger scale pieces, but because of time, I didn't want to have us be here for days. Um, so we're doing a little smaller one, um, but it's gonna, we're gonna start in the middle-ish. I don't really measure because I, I don't, but yeah. Um, so this is just gonna be and like, okay, so everyone always says to me, I can't do succulents and I can't draw flowers. Like it never turns out right. And I'm like, no, you guys, seriously, you're literally drawing, like that's an oval. Like that is a squirrely mm -hmm. little oval that has no um, rhyme or reason to it. Like, Look at your fancy camera. Okay, I'm gonna be quiet for a minute because I'm gonna isolate you so that it doesn't come to me. Um, and so we have the middle part. So it's just these two little oval marks. And then for the rest of the petals, it's sort of just going to be um, like C shapes or parentheses that we're connecting together. So I'm going to show you on this piece of paper right here. So you can sort of see, but it's just going to be a C line like this with a little tip up here. And then we're going to match the tip on this side and then come down. So that's how we're gonna form most of the leaves um, on this succulent and then just sort of build it out from there. So we have the, the middle part um, and then we're just going to make our first petal. So right here, this, and then I turn my paper because it makes my life easier. And then you're just going around and making the same flower shape over and over again. Till you fill it. And then, so we have the base and then we're just in between those two, we're adding in more of those leaves. Do, 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 do. Yes, I will start singing if it's quiet. And we're still going to keep going. And these succulents are really fun because I'm sure you've seen them before, but they can get like super big. Um, 
where they can stay really small. So you can decide how big or small you want it to be. So you can see I'm just going around in the circle and then just anywhere there's a space, I'm adding a petal in between it. It's the same petal that we've been doing the whole time. And it's in the watercolor pencil so that when we um, start adding paint, the lines will go away. And then I think this is a stabilo or Barber Pastel. I don't know the brand, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so I think that's good. Just a little flower base, ease them out just a little bit. So we have our sketch. Um, now we get to add paint. So the question that I get asked a lot when I do my classes um, is knowing how much, I just got paint, my finger in paint. Um, knowing how to like re-wet watercolors and stuff like that. The reason why I chose um, to start with watercolor when um, I started experimenting with painting is because of the ability for you to like easily get up and walk away because like okay i'm going to change change views real quick because like if you're busy and doing things in life and you need to get up and walk away um from acrylics it's really hard because you need the paint to stay wet but with watercolor um, you can re-wet it and you're not going to ruin your paint supply like that. Also, um, just cleanup for the brushes is a lot simpler and um, yeah, it's just a lot of fun to work with. So that's why I do watercolor instead of other mediums. But the question that I get asked a lot is um, how much water to add to the pan when you're like re-wetting it. And there is no real right or wrong answer. Um, but if you want, um, it depends on like the vibrancy of the color you want. If you want your colors to be super, super dark, um, don't add a lot of water. If you want them a little lighter, add more. Um, okay, so. We're gonna be using the yellow, the hooker green and the serpentine, serpentine. Um, and we're gonna be doing a wet on wet, which is wet watercolor or yeah, but <laughs> wet paper on wet watercolor. I'll show you what I'm trying to say. Um, and then I was gonna say something else. Oh yeah, I'm also gonna teach you how working in sections um, really helps with when you're working on wet and wet. And then um, we're also gonna be doing some color blending because that's what we're here for. So we have our watercolor that is wet. So I'm going to start in the middle and with a clean brush, um, I'm just going to paint in this section with water. And then I'm going to drop in the yellow. And so now I'm looking and thinking about where the, um, the lines are in this piece because the lines are gonna be sort of where there's gonna be more shading um, because there's more of a condensed, like, you know, everything is tight inside the little flower. So I'm going to add a little bit of the lighter green, um, to fill in here. And then I'm going to clean my brush and there's actually a little bit too, of, um, too much water on here right now. So I'm going to take some of that water away by just getting my clean brush onto the paper and then blotting it on my paper towel. Um, you can tell how much water there is or isn't 
like you can you can kind of see if there's like a little bubble of water that's a little bit too much water um, because we don't want there be, to be too much because when we add the serpent serpentine we want it to stay concentrated to our outline so um, I'm cleaning my brush and then making sure that I'm wiping it off on the side so it doesn't have that like bubble of liquid and putting it into the serpentine and then using the very nice fine point tip of our uh, pigeon letter brush and then just putting it right there um, along where that line is um, from the watercolor or pencil. Okay, so that's our first little leaf. Look how cute it is. All right, so now because this is super wet, we don't want any of these petals around it to touch because what will happen is if I get this petal wet, then the color from here will bleed and it'll take away all of that shading that we worked so hard to get. So this is where um, it gets kind of fun because you can pick any other petal as long as it's not touching. So I'm going to do this one right here because it's in front of me. Um, I mean, they're all in front of me, but you know, and then I'm just doing the same thing again. So I'm filling it in with water. Then I'm going to go and drop in the yellow. And then the green. And because this is a little bit of a bigger petal, um, I am going to use my brush to push the green color up a little bit. Still keeping the green tip right here. And because this is a little bit of a bigger flower or petal, I don't have to worry about there being too much water in it like I did with this one. So I'm just going to go back to the darker green and then add it right here to where the little bottom part comes out. And now we're gonna repeat for the, all the rest of the petals. And this is where I would usually start to do the fun little like hyperlapse thing and ask about Trader Joe's and stuff because I already explained to you what we're doing. So Peggy, you're welcome to entertain us now with your questions. <laughs> well, the thing is, when I come on, it makes the screen. Oh, I wonder if I do this, if it changes it for everybody else. I feel it's I literally am over here looking at troubleshooting the spotlight feature. Like how, how can and I make this happen. So I haven't fully been paying attention, Teresa, because I'm trying to troubleshoot our tech issues, which are well. Can you let me know if there's questions in the chat that I can answer? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being a bad host. I'm actually being a host with good intentions, but I am being a bad live host. But you guys know me. You know me. Oh, okay. okay. Yes. I forgive you. Please. Please feel free to ask questions, but from the gathering I'm having is that Teresa is demonstrating wet on wet effect, laying down her lighter color first, and then have laying down the darker, more pigmented color and giving it a generous push so that it um, does what she wants it to do. And then she lets that final part settle in and trusts the bleed. Yes, that's the hardest Okay, you can part, see though. pretty good when it's both of us. Cool. Okay, good. Um, that's the hardest part is trusting the bleed, but that's also like kind of why I like to do uh, botanicals in watercolor is because there's no real like mm -hmm. rhyme or reason. Like if you go and look at a flower, like there's just so many different color variations in them. It's so true. Yeah. Flowers are one of the most forgiving and one of the most piece, you know, best pieces of eye candy 
for art. So it's really a win-win. Just makes me so happy. Um, okay, Diane is asking what pencil you use to draw the succulent. It looks white. So I know she used a watercolor pencil because um, that way the pencil lines won't stay, which is smart, smart, smart. But yeah, which pencil is it? So I think it's a Ferber Castle. Is Ferber? that how you say it? Yeah. I don't know. I can't say words. Don't make fun it's of like me. Fa it's, it's like <laughs> Faber, Faber Castell or something. I just think yeah. Ferber is so cute. Um, and it's a light gray because I didn't want it to be a pigment that would like compromise a color that I was using. Um, but I wanted it to be something that I could see, you know, when totally. I'm drawing. Um, because I don't know. I figured it out. <gasps> yeah. I figured it out. I figured it out. I figured it out. Okay. Yay! I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt. I just am having a moment. Okay. I figured it out. Here's what I had to do. I had to join in. I don't know what happened with you, Teresa, because you had a big group. But you guys, if you're missing the Zoom spotlight, you have to have I, in my, I don't know, I just joined from my phone so that there's two of me, but I had to have three people in order to spotlight for everybody. And now I can talk as much as I want to, and it's not yes. going to take away Teresa's beautiful work. I mean, okay. the people are I got really very here excited. To, people are here just to hear us to have a conversation, really, Peggy. Let's be honest. Well, <laughs> the I think an added bonus. <laughs> I think it's a beautiful thing to be able to have a space where we can all hang out and be intentional with creating or watching creating. <laughs> Susan, you are so smart. <laughs> no, I just like you guys. Okay. I am the person who, when there is something to figure out, I will ruminate until I figure it out. Like there is no stopping. I can't stop. I like obsess and then I lose oh a lot of productivity time, but then I figure it out You're and then the I can just tell you guys person. the easy trick. <laughs> I'm the same way, but see like me, I like take on other people's problems, which I'm trying to get better about, but like a friend will tell me a problem and I'm like, how can I solve this? <laughs> I know like, okay. I, and I miss the empathy part where it's like, sometimes it's just nice to say like, oh, I hear you. I see you. That sounds so frustrating. And then leave it at that. Cause to me, that's not fixing anything. And I'm like, why do I want to just validate when like maybe there's a solution to this maybe like, you I just want to find an this? answer We're and make your life better <laughs> <laughs> yeah like you just want to sit in this emotion I have to sit in it with you <laughs> yeah no let's fix it okay. um is it the favor castell light gray yes yes I don't yes. need to say yes as if you couldn't hear her <laughs> I love Diane. Back to the pencil. Back to the pencil. The <laughs> Let's go back to the pencil here. here. <laughs> Keeping Let's us on get... track. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Oh my gosh. I love you guys. I can't even. Okay. Yeah. Feel free to ask any additional questions or just paint along. It's one of those things that is so, so meditative to do swatches and whatnot like this it's just I have a question fun. yeah okay yeah. <laughs> what were you gonna say I forgot <laughs> no you did not um okay did. here's my question and I'm not asking this like as if you're doing anything wrong at all I'm only asking because I think that maybe this might be something that someone else ponders without realizing that they're pondering it and that is this okay so you painted you're using a number two right yeah cool so you, you painted everything with a number two to get into the details now what if I'm wondering, like I'm watching and I'm wondering why it is that you're not switching to a larger brush to apply the additional color wet on wet to, would that, okay, question, would that make it spread further if you used a bigger brush or what is your reason to stay with the smaller brush um, in that second, in part two? Yeah, that is a very good question. So I 
Thank and you. Very cheap. <laughs> <laughs> And so for a really long time, I could only, I only had a number two brush and a number six brush. And so there's just like a number six brush would add too much water to these petals. So it wouldn't have the same like flow. And because we are working in wet on wet, I don't want there to be a ton of water in the petals. So I want them to be able to dry quicker. And so the number two brush makes it so that there's not as much concentrated water. So it dries a little faster. So I can actually already like go right here and do this petal shading right next to each other. But if I'm worried if I used a size six brush that this petal would still be wet. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Okay. But also like it's, it's also mostly because I don't know the answer to your question. Um, <laughs> no, no, listen, I might have, you know, I think that as an instructor, I have my own way that I, and again, I'm so I'm not again, but again, if you know me, I'm self-taught. And so everything that I learn and teach is the way that I prefer. And so I like to ask questions because I'm really interested in how everybody else goes about their process and how it might help somebody else. Cause it's going to be a different way or a different thought process than what I would say. So I'm not going to give my opinion about it. I am just asking discovery questions because I enjoy hearing the answers. Um, Diane had a question, uh, been wondering, do watercolorists like pans or tubes for painting or is there a preference? Okay. So like, I don't understand why there's like such a huge controversy between the two because once the stuff in the tubes is put on your palette like this, it's the same, right? Mm -hmm. Like I haven't found a big difference between um, the, the pan and the tube. So I think it's just personal preference um, of the artist. Yeah. I, can I give my two cents yeah. about this? Because you know, yes. I love opinions. <laughs> yes. So I do have an opinion about this. And I think that the reason, I think that it's not so much about preference on pan versus tube as much as it's preference on uh, quality. And I think that the wrong things are being compared. I think that, um, you know, readily accessible, easy to use in our minds are pans. Um, and that's where a lot of us start. But the problem is, because that's such an easy grab, um, they are often mass produced or mass marketed. And so they are cheaper. They're cheaper um, in general, not all of them. Like Windsor and Newton has a good palette uh, or a good pan palette that you can Hold get. On, I'm going to pause you really quickly. Um, yeah, yeah. Just So because right here we have um, a little bit of differentiation from where all the shading is going to be. So I'm going to make sure that I concentrate it um, at where the tip of this petal is going to be and then just follow along the bottom line right here. This petal's on top of, oops, um, this one. And so I'm not going to do shading along this side um, because I want it to give the illusion that it's lighter. Okay. Perfect. Continue. Helpful. Um, yeah. So I think it's more about like People think it's the question of pan versus tube, but really it's that a lot of pan watercolors are, they, they're full of fillers um, and, you know, they're chalky or whatever. And so it seems like, oh, the tubes must be better. Right. And so then it's like, well, how do I use tubes? How does this work? And it's kind of a mystery because we forget to that information just isn't as accessible. And so then there's the question, why do people use tubes? So what I will, I'm just going to say, um, you can get high quality pre-made panned watercolor sets. Uh, but I know that once you get to the point of using higher quality watercolors, getting your own tubes is worth it because those are the colors you love. That way you can prep your palette the way that you want to, and you create your own pans. And it's just kind of like a natural progression for next step. That being said, um, I know that some of uh, Daniel Smith does this, um, and I think Windsor Newton, most of them do have dot charts now, which basically it features 
all of their colors on a single dot on a page, but they last forever. Like you can probably get four or five paintings out of a single dot because they're so oh, pigmented. So, yeah, there's has mine. One. I do. Yeah. So gorgeous colors, oh, gorgeous colors. They're not my colors, but they are my curated Daniel Smith faves. Um, so if you get a dot chart, then you can sample colors. You can sample how their granulation is, how their transparency is, um, their pigment, you know, opacity, all the, all the things, all the things. But, um, and, oh, and once you decide your favorites, then you can go in, buy the tubes that you want and prep your own palette. Um, and I recommend, I have a, if you guys are on Skillshare, right, hold I have, on, I messed up. Let's, let's watch. Oh yeah. Let's, let's talk about it. Let's talk yeah. about it. So I put green down instead of yellow. You want to know what I'm going to do? Yes. Fix it? I'm going to add the yellow now because I remember <laughs> I'm going to put it in now because it's going to bleed together anyway. Yeah. I love it. Not a big deal. Okay. Here's a question. Yeah. Here, I'll keep going on the palette thing in a minute, but here's a question. Um, in case you didn't mention it when I was troubleshooting, I, you might have what, okay. What's the reason you put yellow down first? Um, so with watercolor, it's really easy to, um, put darker colors on top, but it's really hard to take or to show lighter colors. So you, the rule is, I don't like saying rules, but you're supposed <laughs> to work from uh, light to dark, but really it's just because if I were to fill in this whole thing and put the dark green in first, I would have a really hard time getting like those lighter uh, green tips that we know that succulents have. So it's, it's just, it's just what you do. I love it. Okay. And then also, I just want to add that. Oh, I'm interrupting the palette conversation too. No, no, no. This is about what you were saying. You oh, but can that's... make your own palette. So this is, um, a sample of what I just sent to people that took my hand lettering class. And this is just Daniel Smith paint that I put in tubes and sent everyone their own palette. So it's super like you can, it's not that expensive um, once you figure out with using the dot chart and stuff, um, which colors you like. And really like, I think that I used maybe five colors for most of my paintings for such a long time because you just blend and mix so much. So yeah, I would invest in a dot chart. That's what I did. That Peggy Dean dot chart that I had is the first one that I ever got. And it's gotten me so far. Look at me now. I'm a YouTube sensation. <laughs> She is true. She was saying that she was gonna be a YouTube sensation, and it makes me so happy. Not this time, but a little while ago, and it was fun. <laughs> okay, I also love it, love it, love it when, like, no matter what kind of leaves there are, if you use yellow as a base, even if it's a, like a super tiny peekaboo, like in the vein in the middle or something. I know we're doing succulents, but like leaves in general, like adding the yellows in are so fun. Or you could even like you know, do a big spin on things and put like a light, light blue or something that's, you know, they're just fun to have this pop of light. And then they don't even look like that color. And, and that's the thing, like with shading, it's the unexpected colors. They don't look like that at all. And, um, the finished product. And so it's like, you look at it from a glance when it's done, you don't even notice the yellow, but when you add it in, it adds the depth. Um, okay. Palettes. You guys, when you prep your palettes, that's the biggest mistake is you buy all these really awesome colors. Like you figured out exactly the colors that you want. And then it's time to put them in your palette. Like, yay, this is, this is your big step of wonderful. Um, make sure you prep your palette ahead of time. And that means to rough it up. So rough end of a sponge, a toothbrush, anything, you know, not sandpaper, but um, something that's going to buff it because if you don't, the paint is not going to bond to the sides of your wells. 
And when that happens, you're going to close your palette. The next time that you open it, your watercolors are just going to fall out. And it's like, or they're, you know, it's just, it's really frustrating. But then there's also like, you want to make sure that when you load it, you load and you, um, what am I saying? You uh, squeeze the paint on the edges of each well before you fill it. And that's going to also kind of make it set because watercolor shrinks once it is drying. And so you want it to shrink down and out to the edges so that it grabs those and not in to where it dislodges from where you want it to go. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention about tubes is Yes, you can absolutely use them straight out of the tube and put them on a palette and start using them, but you waste so much paint. Like yeah. I know people who only work that way and it just makes me, my heart sink. Cause I'm like, Oh, that's so much pain that you just grabbed. So, um, yeah, you can, but just know that you need a lot less when it's wet like that. Um, and it's, yeah, I think, I think it's in your best interest to put them in a palette because then you can wet the palette with a spray bottle. They're primed and ready to go. And then you can go from there. Um, okay. I'm going to shish because this is your time. Well, no, another thing that I wanted to add to is when you are setting up a palette, make sure that you think about, um, your like colors and contrasting and stuff like that, because you don't want a orange sitting right next to a blue because if for some reason they mix together you're going to get brown so um i like to go in uh the rainbow order and then have it so that i'm reminded of what the complementary or contrasting colors are so i have like the pink um, and the red are right across from my greens the orange is across from my blues and then the yellow is across from the purple um, and then that just helps me remember like, oh yeah, if I mix these two colors together, we're going to get brown and stuff is going to start to turn muddy. Um, but it's also really fun too, because then you can be like, all right, once the green is dry and I want to add some pops of pink or red, um, it's there for you readily. Okay, here's a question. Is it easier to paint while the paper is drier? Um, I, uh, I don't know what that means. Like, <laughs> um, so, okay. It's not so much about whether the paint is dry or excuse me, the paper is dry um, to paint on if it's easier or not. It's more of the technique that you're going for. So these are actually called wet on dry or wet on wet techniques. So the difference is wet on dry is you're putting paint on dry paper. It's not going to bleed anywhere. Anything that you apply it to is only going to affect the part that's wet. Whereas if you paint on wet paper, anywhere that the paper is already wet, that's where that paint can spread to um, if it's connected. So it also gives you the effect of the bleed. And that's you know one of the most desirable traits of watercolor if that's what you're going for. I feel like that's, we all love wet on wet, um, but some people prefer to just do watercolor on dry paper and then it's like highly detailed and whatnot. And there's a time and a place. You could also do wet on wet and then let that dry and then go back in and add details with wet on dry. So I wouldn't say it's easier. I would say it's a different technique, but maybe it's yeah. easier for some people. I'd love to hear what you guys think in the chat for those who do um, do both techniques. Yeah. Okay. I get it now. Um, yeah. I mean, it just depends on like Peggy was saying, what, what style you're going for, because let me see, um, like for this painting right here, I did a lot of the mm -hmm. same, like wet on wet things, um, that I'm doing in this piece. But then I went over and was able to add more line work. Um, and so it really depends on like the effect that you're going for um, because you can get like super detailed, uh, that's blurry, um, but you can get like super detailed stuff and um, 
in once the paint dries, but it really just depends. Cause like in my watercolor um, in for the summer creative retreat, I did a, um, a watercolor sunflower and like I could have done it using this technique that I'm showing you here, but I wanted to show how you could like go over that with pen. Um, but you can also just add those details in with a, a brush and some darker pigment. So it, yeah, it's all style. Yeah. Um, here's a question. How do you again. find the ins? Huh? I did it again. I keep adding green first. No, oh, that's okay. Hey, you know how to fix that girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how do you find inserts with magnets on the bottom or do you put magnets on yourself? I have seen this both ways, but for the most part, I can find easier to get the magnets separate, but I have the same question. Like, is there like, cause you do this for your workshops, Teresa. So do you know a good source that has magnets already on the, if you guys don't know what we're talking about, the mm. palette that has the individual wells that can come out of the magnet or the, the tin palette. So the magnets help the, the wells sit in to the palette basically. And then you can rearrange them, but the magnets on the bottom, that's what we want to know. Do you have a good source that already has the magnets on the bottom or do you put them on yourself? <laughs> put them on myself. And are those the sticker ones that you can cut? Yeah. Yeah. So you yeah. can get sticker sheets of magnets and then just cut them and then stick them on the bottom. So you don't have to get those like fancy circular ones. Um, cause those other ones apparently work just fine. I'm saying apparently, cause I don't actually do it. And I'm just finding out that Teresa is smart. I mean, not, oh my gosh, as smart you about just this. just found out that I was smart. <laughs> you just found that out. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Um, we've only been working together for years. I mean, <laughs> you don't know that, but I've been talking <laughs> you for that long. So thank you. I'm glad you just figured that out. <laughs> Do you guys want to know something that's completely, I mean, when we do socials on YouTube, it's for these moments, right? Okay. I have to share something. I have to share something that I'm so excited about and I can't get over it. And I'm trying really hard. So Laura just brought me. <laughs> okay. Here's the thing. Oh, you no, I'm sharing. I want to share. Okay. See, you're going to get in trouble now. She's like, I don't care. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> No, it's great. Um, a little while ago, and by that, maybe a year ago, maybe two years ago, beautiful, sweet Edie, the cat lost a whisker. And I just felt like it was the most beautiful gift she ever gave me. And then I lost it. And she just brought me in two whiskers of Edie's. Um, and I've been on. clutching them so hard because I don't want to set them down and lose them. <laughs> um, one year I went to a fair. And there uh -huh. was a cat whisker collection. What? That, yeah, someone collected all the whiskers of their cat. How do and you even find them? I mean, it's it's a magical gift from. It's really because you know they lose whiskers so much throughout their lives. I've never actually found one. And sweet, sweet really? Edie. I no, find them never. Everywhere. Oh man, I feel I so I should blessed. take my cat to the vet. <laughs> I know you should, right? Your cat sheds whiskers like they shed fur. No, not that bad. She's like super furry. So we always. Ooh, Marsha, that's a good hair. idea. No, I know. Do you have a, you have a long haired cat? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Marsha said you could cut up the thin refrigerator magnets that, biz, uh, like the business cards that you get from marketers. Oh, that's really smart genius mm -hmm. See? look at this why well, was just and she saw a cat whisker collection at the san diego county fair okay oh, see see it was at the um it was at the sacramento uh fair so maybe it was like like the are thing. they just like presenting their like like it's a prized shrine yeah so like it was a um thing where they like were showing people's like random collections of stuff <laughs> <laughs> oh 
Okay. And that, that's the only one that I remember. <laughs> Susan said, I have two cats. I find whiskers all the time and I can't uh, bear to throw them out. And I, that's how I feel. I'm still clutching them like with a death grip. Like I've got them in between my fingers. I don't want to put them down. Okay. So now I've forgotten which flowers are wet and which ones are dry. So I'm going to touch <laughs> them, but touch them lightly. So you don't leave a fingerprint. Look, see that one that's still wet. So okay. cover up that fingerprint. <laughs> oh Teresa, have you thought of just picking up the paper and tilting it so you can see no. the shape? No. Why would I do that? That makes way too much sense. Remember when you said that you just found out that I was smart? I think we're going to retract that. <laughs> oh my gosh. No, it's fine. Everyone's, I, I touch mine too. And it's funny because I try really hard not to, um, do that when I'm teaching, but every time I'm like, okay, so don't do what I'm doing right now. But it's just real life. Like, come it on. It is. Like, you're it gonna is. Do like, it. We all Look, do I it. showed you how to cover it up. It's fine. No one's going to know. You're going to forget no one's that gonna you know. touched it. Like, when you give this beautiful succulent to someone and you're like, look what I made. And they're going to be like, did you touch this? And you're going to be like, well, yeah, I painted it. So. I just want to tell you that I just glanced down and because my phone is also connected to the Zoom meeting. And you know, when you look away from what you're working on for a minute or you see it in a different way, it's just like, woo. So I saw the succulent on my tiny phone screen and was like, oh, that looks good. And I just wanted to tell you that. That makes my heart happy. Oh, dang. Oh, dang. Look at that coming alive. You guys should do that anytime that you're working on something and it's like you feel stuck. It's probably a lot better than you think that it is. And that's a good time to like look at something else and really gather it like, okay, I'm looking at my plants. They look cool. I'm, I see my camera. Oh, there's a mess. I'm going to pick it up real fast and then look back and you're going to be like, ooh, ooh, look what I'm doing. And then you're like, got your fresh eyes and then you're able to see, like isolate exactly what it is that you indeed want to add or change without overworking something. Yes. I, Danny said, careful with refrigerator magnets. I bought a whole package of them and they aren't strong enough for pans full of paint. The mini um, magnets in the pans have been a game changer. That's a good, idea, or good, good point. Good I wouldn't, know. yeah. There's like those, there's the ones that are like, specifically like ultra strong yeah I um honestly just stole my magnets from the so I have the craft box for kids and sometimes I give the parents magnets so they can like hang the artwork up on the fridge and so I just stole the magnets oh, that I had from that I just love that <laughs> I love it okay I just <laughs> I don't know who Katie's talking about, but I just noticed um, earlier I saw that she wrote, she's a sensation. And then just now she wrote, she's freaking brilliant. And I'm just like, you're, you're coming with all the compliments today. They're just directed anywhere. <laughs> she's talking about me. Oh yeah. Well, I, I, of course. I just know the Why chat is talking. The chat is talking. Um, Susan's wondering, uh, different Susan. I just, oh no, no, same Susan. I was looking at a different icon. Um, can you tell us the colors that you're using? Yes, I am using um, Indian yellow, hooker green, and serpentine green, all from Daniel Smith. And the reason why I use Daniel Smith is because this one time I was watching um, Instagram and this woman came on and she told me about all of the nasty, gross stuff that other people put in watercolor. And I didn't know any of that. And what I mean by nasty stuff is like animal products. And so this wonderful person who told me that made it so that I started making really conscious decisions about what I use to create my artwork with. So thanks, Peggy. It's <laughs> like, did I do, are you talking about me? Yeah. 
my gosh, I'm so um, So most of Daniel Smith's um, colors are um, not made with any animal byproduct except for Payne's gray and I think the black, I think mm -hmm. the Mars, Mars black, but um, no, Mars Black is good. Mars, Mars Black, Black is, is good. The good lamp. One? Okay. I, th I believe so. And then uh, Lamp Black is what I've been using. But gosh, which one is it? I forget now. Um, but yeah, they make them with like charcoal animal, charcoal, I don't know, animal bones, um, which is really, really common with a lot of black watercolors. So just look for that. Um, but pain's gray. I know it, it, it pains me to say this, <laughs> but, um, and it's hard because there's a lot of people in tutorials and whatnot who use pain's gray. Like it's a really attractive color. It just is, but it is one that is not vegan. So yeah. I'm to just... not lose these whiskers. I'm taping them to my monitor. <laughs> You're hilarious. I'm just really grateful that yeah, they're like, so beautiful that you started like sharing stuff like that because I mean we obviously have choices when it comes to what supplies that we get and like I don't have the capacity to be vegan in my food but like I can make choices about you know the supplies that I use and my artwork is to bring joy to the world and that doesn't involve hurting animals for no reason. Oh yeah, ivory, ivory black is the one. I know, Vanessa, it's so sad. She said she didn't know that about Payne's gray. Yeah, well, Vanessa, can you make a gray for us? Yeah, make us a really good gray. Can you make us a really good <laughs> As gray? As if it's so easy. Yeah. It's so just, not. Just make it, Vanessa. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just make us one. Well, um, I, mean, that's, I actually that's... have a really gorge. <laughs> what? <laughs> no. <laughs> Laura's Laura wants to be on with. No, she doesn't. She was laughing at, and she asked. Never mind. Is she talking about how we're astronauts? Oh, you guys. No, it's no. Do I? No. No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. She said she'll have to now, Vanessa. She said she's gonna have to make a gray yeah, that's like paint. No, gray. you really oh. like I would buy that. Danny yeah. uses soda light instead of Payne's gray, which is actually a good idea. Is it more, thank you. Is it more granulated though? In a in a beautiful way, of course. I think I think soda light is more granulated, right? She said it's a couple bucks more, but feels better using it. And it's supposedly single pigment. Um, okay. That's good. So, I'll look into that. Um, I I've been, let me look at I've been substituting Moon Glow for Payne's Gray, which I know is like not even on the same spectrum. But I've just been obsessed with the granulation that you get in Moon Glow lately. Mm hmm. I'm looking, I'm looking at my chart. I want to see here. You guys, if you don't have the full Daniel Smith dot chart, I really do recommend it. It's like 20 bucks and you get a ton. While we're, do while we're doing this, I'm going to go gallery view real quick. Oh, wait, where am I? Boom. Mm. Okay. This is the Daniel Smith dot chart that has all of the colors. So I'm just going to go, I mean, you have so many and then you can paint with all of them and see uh, what all the colors are and see what you like. So see, this is how I determined like what was going to go on my dot chart and I kind of circled them or put squares around. Obviously greens are my fave, but um, that's also how I figured out like what I wanted to put in my palette. So <clears throat> anyway, that's what I'm looking at right now to give you a vis and go back to speaker view and okay cool but that will help a lot i'm just looking for soda light wait what did you say she said she'll call it pegrisa gray <laughs> do you get it <laughs> oh my gosh please yes. that would be amazing 
Oh, do it. <laughs> Marsha, yeah. Okay, so I do have a dot chart. The problem is, um, is that shipping is like, I don't want to send it in just an envelope because I feel like that's tacky. And so we were sending it USPS, but then the prices increased and it ended up making um, it like basically more than the dot chart itself to ship. And so we pulled them for a while and I haven't figured out a good way to put them back up, but um, I'm working on it. If you email me, we can make it happen. Oh my gosh. I need to figure that out. I need to figure that out. I, have, I do have them though. I have, actually I have, I have a lot that I've hoarded. <laughs> They're really good. Yeah, I work off of them. They last for so long. They really and do. I can't find soda light. I can't. Oh, wait. Payne's gray. You, you guys can make Payne's gray. Just like mix indigo with black. I guess indigo is too, too warm for that. Oh my gosh. You brought me two kitties. Oh, oh yeah. Thank you. She wanted to come say hi to her best friend. Hi. She, she comes over with one a cat in each arm and then sets them on the desk. Um, doesn't she know that you're working right now? <laughs> I know, I know. Well, these are social times. These are like the most, this, these lives are the most cash that we can get and call it work. And that's why we like to hang out. I mean, I may. You you told us that we can come live with you at any time. I'm I'm gonna take you mm -hmm. up on it. We're gonna have mm -hmm. like it'll be it'll be a good way for our podcast to start. Our fake podcast. Fake um, podcast. Yeah, I am all about it. It's funny. It doesn't matter how busy I am. Someone's like, "Let's go live," and I'm like, "Okay, <laughs> I'm in." Where do I sign up? Oh, okay, Moonglow. No way. No, you no. Teresa, Moonglow looks a lot like Payne's Gray. Yeah, it does. And it has the super pretty granulation in it. Yeah. And so does Shadow Violet. Um, but it is, it's a little, it's a little more purple. It is gray, a little more purple. But yeah. I just, I really like it. But Payne's Gray has that cool blue undertone. Yeah. But you're Hi also night. animals, so. <laughs> well, no, I'm saying like Moon Glow, it's not that far off because yeah. of that. Ionite Genuine looks, is it genuine? Not genuine. 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 I'm thinking of the singer from the, the early singer. 2000s. <laughs> now I have that song stuck in my head and it was not the 2000s. It was the 90s. Well, I wanted to say the 90s, but every time I say the 90s, I'm corrected. And so I just assumed. Um, yeah. Okay, Shadow yeah. Violet, that would be a good one. That one has crazy intense granulation, though, in a great way. It's got a, it's like purple, but then the granulation of the like lighter, less pigmented areas are like that blue, like a transparent gray blue. It's really cool. And then kyanite looks like it's more blue than gray for sure. But if you swapped the pigment uh, ratios of Payne's gray, it looks like it could be the swap, like the sister, the sister size, if you will. Lunar violet and lunar blue are awesome, Danny says. I'm going to look. Lunar. Violet and lunar blue. This is fun. I love talking color. We could talk about color all day long. All day long. Uh, I really just I like need a Daniel list of Smith. Peggy Slick. I like Daniel I just Smith because I feel like the color granulation that they have is just so different than any other uh, watercolor that I've used. Which one? Daniel Smith as a whole. Just the granulation is so good. Like I'm obsessed. I totally with the, agree. With the serpentine, like that's why I'm using it for this because all the different color variations that you get from just that one color, mm -hmm. so cool. 
Yeah, Serpentine's one of my favorite. I believe that one is on my dot chart. Oh, it you know is. which other one? If you guys like cool blues. Um, so Serpentine is more of like a yellow green. Did I say cool blues? I meant cool greens. If you like cool greens and you like granulation, the best color you will buy is Cascade Green. Okay, I'll add that to the list. If you like cool blues, like you have to really appreciate a cool blue and granulation because it's like a deep, it's not dark, but it's like a deep green that's cool, but then it separates and you you have like a nice like cyan undertone. It's really, really lovely. Sounds nice. Okay, Michelle um, is asking, has anyone tried the new, and this is what I want to know how to pronounce. Is it <laughs> Schmenke? Schmenke? liquid charcoal it's pretty expensive so hesitant to try without hearing more I've not even heard of it but I will get some and try it because that sounds really attractive to me I love that sound of a liquid charcoal liquid charcoal that does sound fun Danny you know so much okay they're both made with pvk 11 lunar black if you get a tube of lunar black and lunar earth pbr 11 I don't even know what this means but I'm just I'm already nerding out you can mix almost anything into a highly granular and animal friendly combo. Gosh, I want to know so much about what you're talking about. Oh, wait, is that just the pigment color? No, no. What is it? Okay. Oh, I see lunar blue. Oh, it is so pretty. Yeah, that's really similar to kyanite, but it's even more indigo. Um, and more pigmented. Oh, this is fun. <laughs> oh, oh. Teresa, do you have Terra Verte? No. Okay, so that one is like a really deep, it's kind of like jadeite, but it has granulation like Cascade Green does, but it's a little warmer than Cascade Green, but still mm -hmm. cool, still cool, uh, but deep. I, Marcia, um, do you have a dot chart or did you look it up? She said Cascade Green is gorgeous. I so just got the Jadeite um, a couple weeks ago. It's so, like, I love how, because I'm like kind of woo woo, um, when I say kind of very. And <laughs> I really like to uh, incorporate like the minerals in my pieces. Cause then I feel like it just gives it a whole nother meaning, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it totally, it totally does. And it makes it, the whole process makes it you more connected to what you're doing and there's a deeper appreciation. And I feel like when that happens, um, it translates, like, even if it's a silent translation, it comes through in your work. And like literally the amethyst glitters on the paper it's like uh, yeah it's just so cool I think it's amethyst. I don't know. so the thing about the glittery and trans like that's the one thing like they're well, okay no I agree that the shimmery ones I was very unimpressed yeah like, like very underwhelmed like Vanessa Vanessa, shimmer. I was just gonna say it. Yes, Vanessa like if you want does, good metallics, want, yeah, go go to Vanessa. Don't go to Daniel Smith, um, because yeah, it's it's very subpar. Danny, I love that you're pigment coating me. Like I'm a color geek, and I would I would I would just listen to you talk about it for an entire day. So go ahead, sign us up for a Zoom call. I'm just gonna listen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Actually, Danny, would you want to come on a live and talk about it? Because I think that there would be so many people who'd be interested in doing that. I'm not going to put you on the spot. Don't answer that right now. But if you want to email Alina at hello at the pigeon letters and we should do it because, oh my gosh, I'd be so obsessed with that. That does sound really fun. Right? Yeah. You guys would want to come to that. Let's be real. Okay. <laughs> okay don't answer right that, now. Is there anything that you do that I don't come to? <laughs> is there anything I do that I don't come to um yeah I don't know yeah actually that is true <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, I just want to tell everyone, I just have a little disclaimer when I showed you all of these charts. I had a couple duplicate pages in there, so don't think you get that many pages. I'm pretty sure there's like four Maybe or five, four, I think. Four. Yeah, so I had three duplicate pages for, okay, I have two sets apparently right here. So don't think you get eight pages. You do get far more than you need though. Yeah, it's like 238 colors. There might even be more now. Um, okay. So I'm making paints as I'm watching. And every time I look up, this piece gets more and more beautiful. Yeah. I'm telling you, that's what I'm saying. Like I look down for a second and see even in a different view. And I'm like, Ooh, what? I'm like stressed out Hello. that it's taking so long. Like trying to. No, don't that. just, you know, <laughs> okay. Not at all. Um, you walk through, walk through this process again, because that's the thing when some of us are um, really familiar with this process and have been here since you first explained it, oh, yeah. but then yeah. some people aren't. So when uh, I'm not, never mind, ignore me. I'd love to no. hear about this process yes. again as you finish this part. So we started out with a sketch from Peggy's uh, cactus and succulent line drawing book. Um, did I say with a watercolor pencil? Yeah, we sketched it with a watercolor pencil. And then we are going in with wet on wet. So we get a nice uh, watercolor bleed. And we are layering in yellow, then a lighter green and a darker green. So the lighter green is um, Hooker's Green by Daniel Smith and adding it towards the bottom so it blooms generously. I liked it when Peggy described it like that. That made it sound like super fancy and cool. Like I know what I'm doing. I mean, I do know what I'm doing. I'm on, I'm on YouTube with all you guys and you're watching me because I know what I'm you're doing. You're a YouTube <laughs> sensation. I'm a YouTube sensation. Okay. So the reason why that's funny is because when um, I used to go to law school, and I failed the bar three times. But when I was studying for the bar at my breaks, I would watch uh, beauty bloggers. And I would be like, well, if this whole like law school thing doesn't work out, I can always become a beauty blogger and become a YouTube sensation. And so now I get to paint while being on YouTube. So it's like I predicted my own future. So I'm very, I'm very excited to be here with all of you beautiful people. <laughs> don't laugh um, at me Vanessa said, asks do you always sketch with a watercolor pencil I do always sketch with a watercolor pencil because when you put um a lot of times when you put watercolor on top of a pencil mark you can't erase or if you try and erase then you're like taking away all of that pigment that you just worked so hard to bloom out everywhere um, and so, yeah, I use a gray watercolor pencil, so I don't get those pencil lines, um, but I can still like see what I'm doing. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Ding. So what you're doing is um, coming back to the areas once the edges are dry for the peekaboo friends yes. so that you have a hard separation in between. Right. We want to make sure that the petals um, that we're working around are dry because if I were to put my brush up against this wet petal, it would all bleed out and we wouldn't get that dimension that we're going for. So you can see how each petal, we can sort of see how it's all shaking out to be its own because of how uh, we're blending it. And so it's important to just make a note of the areas that are still wet um, and still dry. Great tip. Thanks. I'm just reading. I, <laughs> I was reading. That sounded really condescending. No. Great tip. 
<laughs> You're hilarious. <laughs> I love the edges, especially, okay, the funny thing is, can you guess which petal or which, uh, what do you call succulent petals? They're not pe- leaves, duh. <laughs> um, it's fine. I know nature. Can you guess which one's my favorite out of all of them? This one. Nope. It's the one you touched. Is it? Yes. <laughs> And I think the reason why is because, um, it, I think I like the bleed heavy toward the end. And then I think I like that white space. That's oh, just yeah. like when it's super yeah. translucent in the middle, it's like the, the, <laughs> I was going to say the wind, it's like the lights catching it right there. The wind is catching it right there. Well, I'm just gonna, you know, steal a phrase from my good friend, Bob Ross. <laughs> And we're just going to call it a happy little accident. I love it. But like you said in the beginning, the thing about painting nature is that there's not necessarily rules because there's so many variations in color and the way that the light hits and the petals and nothing's perfect in nature. And so it's very forgiving while at the same time, very satisfying to see an end result because we all love nature. Right. Flowers. I'm going to get Vanessa. She says she's scared to do the cannibals. I'm totally like calling her out right now. Um, but okay, but wait to her face. So when you call I'm not calling her out, <laughs> when you call her out, will you tell her your experience in trying what she's really good at that maybe you might not have been? Um, so like, yeah, we've had this conversation um, because she's my my buddy on the design team, but she says that she like psychs herself out with doing florals because she never can get them to look right. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, you're crazy. Like florals don't have to look like anything. And then I did her tutorial when she went live with you of her amazing like outer space stuff. Uh, It's just so cool. And like, she makes it look so easy too. So I think it's just funny that like, we're both like, I could never do what you do. And then we're both like, oh, but it's easy. (laughs) Yeah, totally. Cheryl, because you said this in the chat, I just want to say it out loud because I was typing to you. Um, Cheryl, Cheryl is sharing. Uh, She said, thanks for the class. Today is my mom's first birthday in heaven and I've been missing her. This painting reminds me of how much she loved plants and the hens and chicks succulents on her deck. And I think this because I think that it is so beautiful to be able to, you know, uh, stitch life into our art. I know, I know this day because I had this day and it's a tough day. It's an unusual feeling. I'm glad day. that you feel that connection. And I, I just want to say as someone who has been through this process, once and then will again this year, but I had my first, wait, is that right? Yeah. Okay. Oh my gosh. Time. Um, and then you feel guilty for not knowing (laughs) what time, but these signs, I don't ignore these signs. These types of things are totally happening intentional. Like there it's, I totally believe that these little things like this, are our moms speaking to us yep. and letting us know that they're thinking of you too and that you're safe and that they're with you and it's just a beautiful it's a beautiful thing I am just so incredibly honored that like one you shared that two that you're watching this and that this connects you with her because like that's why I got in to artwork is because of the healingness of it but then being able to connect with others and just share like you know this reminds me of this person that's special in my life like there's it just makes my heart so happy so thank you so much and yes those pennies from heaven from the people that we love of the signs that they're still with us are like so very real Yeah. And I, you know, people would tell me that 
leading up to it, like, don't ignore this, don't ignore this. But the more I kept that in my mind, it was like, I was more aware about little things and there were too many coincidences mm-hmm. in certain times. And it was just like, you know, you, whatever. I mean, Teresa, you said you're woo woo and I'm not, but when I allow myself to be, whether I believe it or not, but when I, when I allow myself to be in that space, like I do believe it. And it does make me feel really good in those moments. And it feel it makes me feel connected and it's just a beautiful thing. And so thank you so much, Cheryl, for, for opening up, because I think that that is one of the best, the best things that we can do when we come together is, is to be in our vulnerable place and be in our very real life place. Today is a weird day for you. I, I, I know this because I had this particular day and it's a weird day. Yeah, it is. But just think about, you know, her favorite things and you are, so you're honoring her and it doesn't get easier, but we're here for you. I was thinking about, I wouldn't say, I think it, okay, easier is the wrong word, but I think that it gets more peaceful as yes. time goes on. Yes. That's, that's a good way of putting it. Cause it's like time. There was an analogy that someone, well, several that people <laughs> said to me that were, they were so kind. I, so many beautiful people in the art world when I was sharing about my mom um, and listen, one of the things, and I'm not trying to make this about me at all. I'm just trying, trying to um, relate because when I was, when people were relating to me, it was really helpful. And what some people said about grief was it's like initially like a ball was just like um, in a tiny box of a room was launched really hard. And it's just like hitting. And every time it hits the wall or the ceiling or the floor, it's so intense. It's like the wave analogy, which if you haven't heard that one, that one makes sense too. It's like initially the storm and the waves and the, they come crashing and you just keep getting knocked down and keep getting knocked down. And you're just like drowning in this, in these waves that just keep crashing. But then like, as the storm stops, they get more mild, they get you know, you start to come up again and eventually the waves are going to come back. There's going to be another storm, but that's like our emotions. But the ball analogy is like, it's going to slow down. It has to slow down. Yeah. And it's going to start hitting not as hard, you know? So these, and you experienced a lot of that already um, since, you know, it's a year, but it's just nice to know that there are people who understand what that feeling is like. For me, it was really helpful because it's like, wow, I'm in this very strange space that nobody could possibly understand. And then when I realized, oh, we're in this club together, we didn't ask to be in this club, but we're in this club. Yep, for sure. Okay. Are you on your last one? Well, I have the middle to do still too. That's yeah. I love how this is coming together. I love the edges. Thank you. Because I just want to let y'all know that um, it's not outlined. So if you're joining in, that's not outlined. That's just a bleed. That's the magic of the bleed. Magic of the bleed. And that's the magic of like being able to work a wet on wet and keeping the color contained inside itself. Like that's the fun of watercolors, making it so that it doesn't travel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the control you have, because like Teresa, for her personal style on this one is she's, she's having it bleed up from the center along the entire, um, base. Whereas like when you start experimenting with wet on wet, you can do that, you know, along just the edges or isolate, um, just the base and then have, you know, there's just a lot you can do. Isolate the center. It's yeah. There's seriously so many options. 
And it's so pretty how it's coming together. Have you ever, have you ever taken um, the finished piece and drawn, done like wet on dry, those little, what do you call them? The little, if they're not sprigs, but the, <laughs> the little, you know, uh, blooms that come out of them, just like a random little. Yeah. Um, hold on. Let's see. I was just thinking about how cutie pie that would be. Well, I'm really glad that you think that would be really cutie pie because that's what I did on uh, the piece that inspired this tutorial. So if you can see how I have. The yeah, wall. I love. And then like I was able to get into the detail and like do like the little line work on the, uh, you can't see, why is it not focused? Um, but like do the little line work on the petals and stuff and then incorporate some of that contrasting color just to add a little bit more interest. Um, but I wanted to keep things simple for today. So Yeah, totally. This, but it's nice to know like what, your next steps can be from there. Teresa looks so good. Thanks. I love. I think the Thanks. I think of what on what like the control of letting kids play in the yard. They can still wreck shop, but it's more controlled environment than the street. <laughs> I love that. I love I that. Too. And yeah, I think the reason why I like wet on wet is because I really like to have control of things. I'm trying to let that go a little bit. And mm -hmm. so this is me experimenting with that and seeing okay. how I like it. <laughs> I love it. It's so perfect. Thank you. Ah, you guys. Okay. Listen, if you have been painting along or you're going to later, or if you even created, you know, I know some of you are working digitally. Um, be sure to tag myself and Teresa. If you share it on social. And when I say, if, I mean, you will do it <laughs> because we want to see what you made. Because it's so fun to see people's interpretation. Um, oh, Cheryl's asking right now, is there a way to share how ours turned out? Um, so yeah, just tag uh, Teresa Hatto and the pigeon letter so that we can see how that turned out. Yes, I want to see it. So pretty. It. You're getting compliments now. <gasps> compliment, compliment. Yeah. <laughs> everyone's telling me how great I am. That's so nice of you. Thank you. Well, can everyone just say, Teresa, you're a YouTube sensation? Oh, uh, don't do it. No, that's what we need to say. And then maybe add an emoji like pow or bam. What are the, <laughs> the lightning bolt? Um, I know there's a tiny bit of a lag. Jennifer's going to do it. Cheryl's oh going to do it. You're hilarious. Okay. I there's going to be a lag, official. but I can't. I can't wait for it to come in and then I'm going to screenshot it and give it to you. Okay. Okay. Everyone, come on. It'll be my first thing in what you call that folder that you have. Your, um, your pep folder. Yeah. If you guys don't know about this, everybody needs a pep folder. And what that is, is a folder on your desktop that YouTube sensation. Teresa is a YouTube sensation. Yes. Um, <laughs> let's see. So it's a folder on your desktop where you can put a screen, like all the spots when people say nice things to you so that when you're having your moment, because we all have our moment, we can look at our pep folder and remember that people do love us, that we do nice things. <laughs> we do things that people like. Okay, I'm going to go to gallery here and then I'll get rid of myself on this other one. Get rid of myself. Leave. Awesome. You guys, thanks so much for joining in. I hope that this was just as fun as it was for us. Oh, oh, Teresa, you're a YouTube sensation. Thank you, everyone, for making my dreams come true. Seriously. <laughs> like, I know I sound like I'm joking. But I do that so that I don't start crying because I will start crying. But seriously, like Peggy, you know, I love you so love you very back. much. 
I love you back so very much. Just like this community is has changed my life so much. And I'm just so grateful to be able to pour some love onto you and share and hopefully inspire some creativity in your day. I just want to let that linger. Okay, now it's awkward. <laughs> well, I was reading the chat too. You all, yeah, you've got a lot of um, YouTube since I've got a great screenshot for you and I'm going to send it right over so that you can, yes, you guys just share. Um, yeah, the pep folder is the best, Jen. Uh, it helps so much because when you're having those hard moments, my gosh, it's so helpful. Um, okay. You guys, we're going to wrap. Thanks so much for hanging out. Um, thanks for bearing with us in the beginning. <laughs> you guys are going to start showing up to all the lives, like at least five to 10 minutes late. Don't do it. Don't you show up one of these days. It's going to be on time. Um, <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, all the compliments are coming in, Teresa. Thanks, Jen. Thanks, Danny. Thanks, Jeffrey. Thanks, Vanessa. Thanks, Marsha. Thanks, Susan. Thanks, Cheryl. Thanks. Oh my gosh. All Jeffrey. Okay. Um, Cheryl saying I need a little more instruction and in getting those great outlines. And I'm sure that Teresa would love to follow up. So share, share, yeah, share. Yeah. Yeah. No, if you go find me on Instagram, I'm at Teresa Haddo everywhere. Um, send me a message. Yeah. I'll answer it. I do workshops. I do classes, all those things. All those things. All those things. Peggy's going to make me do Skillshare. She's not making me. I'm, I'm all right. voluntarily all right. doing it. Okay. I'm stopping gonna do rambling. It. Yeah, I'm gonna she's do ready. It. Okay. Pull the ready. trigger. That's yeah. okay. I'm a rambler. We're both ramblers. It works really well. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thank you so much to Teresa. Um, I also have her Instagram linked and we'll have other info linked, but it's under this live stream in the description. Look at this. It's down here. The link below we're pointing. Um, also the replay 